From 1993 to 1998, an obscure author turned out six novels, all original mysteries starring our own Lieutenant Columbo. In doing so, he would unwittingly create one of the most controversial chapters, pun intended, in all of Columbodom. And the true story behind today's Echoes of Columbo is more mind-bending still. So let's crack the spine on the William Harrington novels. You're probably familiar with the straight episode novelizations of the 1970s, but these books, although they follow the show's conventions, are unlike anything you've encountered before, taking our familiar hero and dropping him into a semblance of a real 1990s police department. In fact, the books are so different that they exist in their own little pocket dimension, separate and distinct from all other Columbo media. The central theme of the books is having the lieutenant tackle America's most baffling historical mysteries, finding Jimmy Hoffa, battling Charles Manson, solving the Kennedy assassination. It's an intriguing premise, but Columbo fans are a traditional lot. They appreciate the laid-back, non-violent, relatively family-friendly atmosphere of the show. And that's not what the books are like at all. Each one is awash with not-safe-for-TV amounts of violence, drugs, sex, and a kind of sleazy 90s realism that never fails to shock new readers. For hardcore Columbineers, this simply isn't their Columbo. For instance, the literary lieutenant frequently drinks on duty, something the TV character does mostly in the earliest episodes. He does carry a gun, although his struggles to avoid doing so are a recurring subplot. And he's also much less shy about sex, openly ogling the numerous scantily clad or nude ladies he encounters. The books even feature a supporting female character who functions as almost a love interest for Columbo. Trust me, you have to read it to believe it. These elements are so bizarre that fans often overlook how faithful and accurate the books are in most other ways. Certain lines are lifted right from the classic series. You got a European car? That's a French car. Yeah, my car is French car. And Columbo's other character details are spot on, down to his youth in Chinatown, that dim sum reminds me of the time I used to have at home. And his old Irish sergeant in New York. And this is for the sainted memory of Sergeant Gilhool. It's clear that the author is simply trying to do something a little different, and in doing so, made these books a reviled footnote in Columbo history. That author was William Harrington, a mystery thriller writer, researcher, and ghostwriter, a frequent collaborator of famous genre names like Harold Robbins, Margaret Truman, and Elliot Roosevelt. Harrington's biggest solo literary work was The English Lady, a World War II thriller about a seductive aristocrat who teams up with British intelligence to assassinate Hitler. A Renaissance man, and something of a troubled bon vivant, Harrington would commit suicide at age 68 but not before penning a suicide note in the form of his own obituary. In it, he claimed to be not only a collaborator of Robbins, Truman, and Roosevelt, he claimed to be those authors, not just contributing to, but writing the novels published under their names. Oh, come on, get to the climax, Lieutenant. You're talking to a writer. Am I? That's not what I heard. In the case of Elliot Roosevelt, credit only came after both Roosevelt and Harrington had died. I mean, he simply wasn't a writer. With the final book in the series, Murder at the President's Door, being posthumously credited to our Columbo author. But here is where the story gets as strange and unusual as any case the lieutenant tackled. Because Harrington also claimed credit for the works of Margaret Truman. That's a lie. And those books have since been credited to another mystery author and ghostwriter, Donald Bain. Bain was credited as the author of Margaret Truman's Capital Crimes series after she passed away in 2008. If you're gonna write a book, it takes a certain amount of skill. Writing several additional entries in the series under his own name. Keep in mind that in William Harrington's New York Times obituary, his agent, Ted Chichak, who was also Margaret Truman's agent, claimed that Truman had written all these books herself, that she wouldn't need the help of a mere researcher like Harrington. Even if some of Harrington's authorship claims fell short of the truth, no doubt influenced by his troubled state of mind before taking his own life, for Chichak to so publicly denigrate him is a detestable, disgusting lie. That wasn't exactly an ethical thing that you did, was it? And with Donald Bain, the real author still living, still writing books for which he was receiving no recognition. And that's the key, that you're not a writer. This scenario conjures up images of Findlay Crawford, a talentless hack taking credit for another man's work. And yet, not one word of acknowledgement? I don't exist here. But there's another layer to this story. 
because in the late 80s and early 90s, Richard Levinson and William Link, the creators of Columbo, had another mega-hit mystery on their hands in the form of Murder, She Wrote. And that show also spawned a series of novels credited to fictional sleuth Jessica Fletcher and real author Donald Bain. With Bain having worked with Levinson and Link on the first Murder, She Wrote book, and most assuredly knowing Harrington while the two authors labored in obscurity, did he recommend Harrington when the idea of a Columbo novel was raised? Or did the Columbo creators simply pick both men out of that mystery ghostwriter factory? It brings the story full circle, doesn't it? William Harrington died on November 8th, 2000, 21 years ago to the day that this is being recorded. And in all those years, he's never received the recognition he deserves, even in the Columbo universe. Because he didn't just settle for copying the TV show, he strove for something more, something different, something original. Harrington tried to update Columbo, make the character and the show more relatable to a modern audience. He introduced memorable, entertaining recurring characters, including several dynamic female roles that no TV show produced today could be without. Harrington's books entertained me as a middle and high schooler. I have a vivid memory of reading them in our familiar corner at the community pool in Satterton, Pennsylvania, baked by the heat radiating up from the concrete. They entertained me as an adult, rereading them for this video. They'll entertain you too, so if you see the these novels at a used bookstore, don't pass them by. They're a unique piece of Columbo history. If you're a fan who thinks he's seen it all, trust me, you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, that's very nice. Uh, uh, didn't expect gifts tonight, huh? Thank you. Maybe I can pick up a few pointers. Oh, oh I'm sure you can. Uh, could you handle some more? Oh, all right. Up, and then extra. 